Hey guys, the long-awaited Ganyu rerun is finally here. And to celebrate, I'm going to share all of my Ganyu tips, team comps, builds, and gameplay guides for every Ganyu new owners out there. I know that some of you may not have enough Primo gems to pull for both Ganyu and Zhongli. But don't get disheartened by that, because in this video, I will show you a couple of alternative to Zhongli that works great too. The alternatives I am talking about is Xinyan and Diana. Both characters are great shielders that work well with Ganyu, especially if you have them at higher constellations, which I will talk about later. Now please allow me to demonstrate you their performance in the Abyss, and we will compare that to Zhongli. First, please take a look at my best performance using Zhongli as the shielder. As demonstrated, this team can clear this side of the chamber within 75 seconds. Now let's take a look at my best performance using Diana as the shielder instead of Zhongli. With Diana, the clear time is a respectable 87 seconds, just 12 seconds slower than Zhongli. Now let's take a look at my best performance using Xinyan as the shielder.
next on the agenda. Everybody stand back! With Sinyan, the clear time is 92 seconds, just a little bit slower than Diana, but it could be because of the RNG factor. So evidently, without Zhongli, Ganyu can still perform well, even in the hardest challenge of the game using these alternatives. Now please let me explain to you how Sinyan's shield works. Her shield skill has three level, the level depends on how many enemies hit when she's using the skill. When she hits only one enemy, her shield level will be at level 1, providing the least amount of damage absorption. When she hits two enemies, her shield level will be at level 2, providing a slightly thicker shield. When she unlocks her ascension phase 4, her minimum shield level will be increased to a level 2. So that means, when she hits two enemies, her shield level will be at level 3, providing the maximum amount of damage absorption. When her shield is at level 3, it will also deal intermittent pyro damage to surrounding enemies, providing Ganyu the opportunity to deal huge reverse melt damage while being protected by it. And if your Sinyan is at Constellation 2, her Elemental Burst will also provide a level 3 shield. At Constellation 3, her Elemental Skill level is increased by 3, making her shield even stronger. So for Ganyu team, a C3 Sinyan is enough, as for the other constellations they don't matter at all. Now for the artifact set, Sinyan is best with the four-piece tenacity of the Millilith set, using full defense main stats and substats. This is because when she cast her shield at the maximum level, the intermittent pyro damage will trigger the artifact set's passive, which will increase the shield strength further, and also provide 20% attack bonus to the entire party. And for the weapon, Sinyan can use either Sacrificial Greatsword or the White Blind. Sacrificial Greatsword will allow Sinyan to cast her shield one more time if it triggers, and the White Blind can strengthen her shield even more. Now let's move on to the other alternative, Diana. With Diana, you can hold her elemental skill instead of pressing, to cast her stronger version of the shield. And if you equip her with Sacrificial Bow, she can easily triggers the bow's passive to get another free skill. Just make sure you don't swap her off too early before the bow's passive triggers. Her best artifact set is a combination of a two-piece Maiden Beloved set and a two-piece Tenacity of the Millilith set, with full HP main stats and substats. The sets will give her 20% max HP, which will also increase her shield strength and 15% healing bonus. Now for her constellations, her C2 will give her 15% more shield strength, and her C5 will give her an increased shield skill level by 3, thus increasing her shield strength even further. Her C6, although can give 200 elemental mastery to the character inside her burst AoE. In practice it will not boost Ganyu's melt damage. Because her burst damage will steal some of Ganyu's melt reaction off. So in summary, the best alternatives to Zhongli for Ganyu are either a C3 Sinyan or a C5 Diana. You can of course, use other shielders like Noel, Toma, Yenfei or Beidou, but in my opinion, Noel's shield has too long cooldown, Toma's shield is not effective with Ganyu, and Yenfei or Beidou needs energy to cast their shield. In the end, having Zhongli is always beneficial, since his shield is a lot stronger, has longer duration, can reduce enemies' resistance, and give the entire party 20% attack boost. This is why I highly recommend you guys to pull for Zhongli 2 when you have the extra fates later. Next, I will talk about Ganyu's team comps, her artifact set, and her weapon. There are currently two effective team comps for Ganyu, which are a melt team and a freeze team. But her best artifact set and her weapon depends on which team you are going to build around her. The reason is that, with Melt Ganyu, you have to build a ton of crit rate on a Wanderer's troop set, 
to maximize her melt reaction damage and to make sure it crits every time. But with Freeze Ganyu, you have to build crit damage instead on a Blizzard Strayer set. This is because the Artifact set and the Cryo Resonance already gave Ganyu a ton of crit rate against frozen enemies. And the best weapon for the Melt Ganyu is also different from the best weapon for the Freeze Ganyu. Now to help you choose which team you like, let's take a look at my recorded gameplay from the previous Abyss. As demonstrated, both have very different gameplay, but they are as strong as each other, despite my Ganyu Freeze team was not fully optimized for that. But I have to remind you regarding the Freeze Ganyu team, if you encounter enemies that cannot be frozen, then your Ganyu's effective crit rate would be reduced by 20% since her artifact set's passive won't trigger. And if the enemies cannot be affected by Cryo at all, then your Ganyu's effective crit rate would be reduced even further by 35%, meaning you would lose a total of 55% effective crit rate when fighting enemies that cannot be affected by cryo. And since Freeze Ganyu team mostly consists of cryo, hydro, and anemo characters, they will also have a hard time facing cryo enemies and cryo shielded enemies. So please keep that in mind before choosing the Freeze Ganyu route. For Melt Ganyu team, you don't have to worry about it at all, since a Melt Ganyu has high native critical rate built in, and her team also have pyro characters in it, so they can help defeat cryo enemies quickly. For the team comps, Melt Ganyu team usually consists of Xiangling as her pyro applicator, and a shielder that I have discussed earlier which you can choose from Zhongli, Xinyan, or Diana. Getting a C4 Xiangling is highly recommended, as it will increase the duration of her pyronado by 4 more seconds, giving a total of 14 seconds for Ganyu to deal continuous melt damage. Another alternative to Xiangling is a combination of Bennett and Kazuha, making use of Kazuha's elemental burst to apply continuous pyro to the enemies and at the same time giving Ganyu a cryo damage bonus from Kazuha's elemental mastery stats. And for the last slot, basically it can be any character, but for higher DPS it usually will be Bennett, since he can heal too, which is very important nowadays. And for utility, you can bring in Kokomi or Barbara if you need to break pyro shields faster, just like in the current of this 2.4. And for the Freeze Ganyu team comps, they mostly consist of a Hydro Applicator, a Cryo for activating the Cryo Resonance along with Ganyu herself, and an Anemo to shred enemies' resistance. Here I can show you some techniques to freeze enemies using different Hydro characters.
Now that you've seen both sides of Ganyu, let me show you her best artifact set and her weapon for each team. In the last segment, I'm going to show you some tips to help you improve your Ganyu gameplay. Tip number 1. Increase your mouse DPI and lower your in-game sensitivity to improve the smoothness of Ganyu's aim shot or any bow character's aim shot in general. Tip number 2. In the Melt Team, after Bennett's burst, Always add a slash to get extra energy particles for himself and Xiangling. Then, use Xiangling's elemental skill first before casting her elemental burst. This is to make sure that Bennett's attack buff is applied on her, before she cast her elemental burst. Then the same goes with Ganyu. Make sure to cast her elemental skill first, before casting her elemental burst, to make sure Bennett's attack buff is applied on her, before she cast her elemental burst. Tip number 3. After pressing the R button to enter the aim mode, instead of waiting and clicking the mouse button, hold your mouse button instead and release it when the second indicator is halfway through, to speed up her charge shot time. You can speed up her charge shot even more, by not using the R button. But there is a risk that if you click the left mouse button too early after she releases her arrow, she will end up doing nothing, thus losing DPS. Tip number 4. If you have extra fates, get Zhongli instead of Amos Bow. This is not only because there are plenty of 4-star bows that are almost as good as Amos Bow, but also because you can eventually get an Amos Bow from the standard banner later. I think that's all guys. I hope this video will be helpful to all of you Ganyu new owners, and I wish you luck for all of you that haven't got her yet. Please leave a like and subscribe for more videos from me and thank you so much for watching. I'll see you soon in my next video.